Well, it's back to school time. Maybe not 100% normal like we had hoped, but still most students in the country are back uh, in their buildings, attending classes, going to the gym, uh, going to the library, all those things that, that happen with school. And this month, we're going to go back to school here as well. For the next three Sundays, we're going to do a little Bible basics. Call it Bible 101. Now, if you're new to the Bible, this will give you a foundation to understand God's Word. But if you have been a Bible scholar all your life, well, then just consider it a, a refresher course and maybe a little uh, way for you to help introduce somebody else to the Scriptures who's just learning. We're going to start today with the reading from 2 Timothy chapter 3, one of the few places in the Bible where the Bible actually talks about itself. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, so what is this holy scripture that's useful for teaching, for, for making us wise, for equipping us for, for good work and leading us to salvation in Christ Jesus? <clears throat> well, we call it the Bible, which means the book. But really, it's not a book. It's a library of books. And knowing that fact can help you escape the, the number one error that beginners make when they, they take up wanting to read the Bible. How many of you, when you knew it in the Bible, you picked it up and you tried to read straight through like you would another book? Anybody do that? You know, you, you start out like, like we do with a regular book on page one. And it says, in the beginning. So shouldn't we start there? And you start reading Genesis and Exodus and it's pretty good and you, things are going along well. And then you get into Leviticus and all these rules, Jewish ritual rules. And then you get into Numbers, which is uh, about uh, the Israelite cent census. You read things like, the descendants of Gad by their clans were, through Zephon, the Zephonite clan, through Haggai, the Haggai clan, through Shuni, the Shunite clan, through Ozni, the Oznite clan, through Eri, the Erite clan, through Erodi, the Erodite clan, through Eri... Ereli, the Erelite clan, these are the clans of Gad. Those numbered were 40,500. And before we're barely 100 pages in, we are so confused and so bored that we put it aside. And we never even get to King David, let alone to Jesus. Ever happened to you? It happens to a lot of people. Oh, I tried to read the Bible, but I but I just uh, gave up. Well, remember that you don't have to read it in order. It's a library. We have a library here in the church, just through those doors. And if you go to that library and you go to the very first book on the very first shelf, you'll read a Stacy Adams novel. And if you continue reading through the library, shelf by shelf, for a thousand books more, you wind up with the very last book that was on the shelf, The Love of God. Now, how many of you suppose that if you started reading with this novel, would ever get to The Love of God? My guess is not too many of us. And the same thing happens in the Bible. So if you need the love of God right now and you need to know how much God loves you, well then just go right there. Go to, go to John. And read John 3.16, as, uh, as so many are familiar with, where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Or go to the first letter of John, where it says, This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
The Bible is a library. And if you want to read it straight through, fine. I've done it. Many of you have. But don't get bogged down in thinking that you've got to read it like a single book from front to back. Okay, so that's Bible basic number one. This is a library. So what's in the library? Well, as with any library, there are many different kinds of books, and they all read a little differently. In our church not library, there are, are novels like this. There are theology books like this. There's the great classics like Veggie Tales, Larry Boy, and the Merciless Mango. <laughs> they're all different, but believe it or not, they're all trying to convey something about God in their own way, in their own unique voice. We read that all Scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching and correcting and rebuking and training in righteousness, for making us wise for salvation in Christ Jesus. But each book is different. So in here, there are history books, like First and Second Kings. There are song lyrics, like Psalms. There are proverbs, like, well, like Proverbs. There are prophets, like Hosea, and Isaiah. There are gospel writers telling the life of Jesus. There are the letters from Paul and, and Peter and, and James and John, and they're all collected into a library with two main parts. We call the first part the Old Testament, which is everything before Jesus, and the second part the New Testament, which starts with Jesus. Now, these two parts were written in two different languages. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, which is the Jewish language. And the New Testament was written in Greek, the common language of the area during Jesus' time. Now, how many of you speak ancient Hebrew or Greek? <laughs> Just as I suspected. <clears throat> so that's why we read the Bible in an English translation, or a Spanish translation, or any of the hundreds of languages the Christians speak. The Bible can't teach us, train us, or lead us to Jesus if we can't understand it. In English alone, there are dozens of different translations to help us understand. In worship here, I usually use the NIV, the New International Version. But sometimes I use the NLT, the New Living Translation, or the CEV, the uh, Contemporary English Version. And sometimes I even use that that great old King James Version, because of the beauty of its language and because we're familiar with it in things like the Lord's Prayer, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now, we don't use words like maketh anymore. And the King James is filled with, with words like that that are, um, seem slightly strange. And if you can understand them, that's fine. But don't get stuck there. If, if all you have is a King James Version of the Bible and you can't understand it, we'll get a version that you can. When I started out uh, in Christian ministry, uh, Christians used to fight about what was the right translation. Wes can affirm this, uh, uh, having worked uh, in, uh, with a Christian bookstore and uh, know that Everybody wants the right translation. And there's one woman who insisted that I only read from the King James Version. And so I asked her why, and she said, well, James was the brother of Jesus, so he knows best. I had to explain to her that the King James, of the King James Version, was King James I of England, who commissioned that translation in 1611. It was not the James, the brother of Jesus. But I don't think she ever believed me. <laughs> Still, if a translation helps you become wise to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, well then read it. Or better yet, read a bunch of translations. And an easy way you can do that is to get the YouVersion Bible app, put it on your phone or your tablet. It doesn't cost anything, just download it from... Uh, from the app store, and you can check out any version you want and compare them, and it's a great way to study. There's all sorts of other things to help you get into the Bible on that app. 
encourage you to use it. Now, I said the Bible has two sections, the Old Testament written in Hebrew, and this is the only part of the Bible that the Jews use today, and the New Testament, which is written in Greek, but I'm talking as a Protestant. See, the Catholic and the Orthodox churches have a third group of books that are Old Testament books written in Greek, such as Maccabees and and Tobit. Now, the Jews didn't include these Greek books in their scriptures. They saw them as, as good books, but not on the same level as scripture. And, and when Martin Luther uh, translated the scriptures into German, he didn't include those books either. He stuck with the ones that, that the Jews used. But those books are included, so there's half a dozen um, extra books, if you will, in the Orthodox or the, the Catholic Bible. And, and it yields one of the great Bible trivia questions, and that is, what Jewish holiday is not in the Jewish Bible, but is in the Orthodox and Catholic Bible? But you know the answer? The answer is Hanukkah. The story of Hanukkah is not in the Jewish Bible. Um, it happened, and it's a part of those extra books written in Greek, but the story is actually recorded in First and Second Maccabees that you'll find in a Catholic or Orthodox Bible. So we have a different number of books, uh, depending on which Bible you pick up. Um, and there's a few other little uh, differences, like sometimes the numbers of a chapter are a little bit different, because you remember, it wasn't written with chapter numbers. People put that on many years later so we could make reference to it. When, when Paul sat down to write his letter, he didn't write Chapter 1, verse 3, those were just added later. Uh, They're not a part of the Scripture. As well as, uh, if there's any footnotes in your Bible, I also had a a woman who accused me, she says, why don't you preach on the whole Bible? I said, what do you mean? She says, you always stop reading before you get to the end. I said, show me, what do you mean? She showed me, she had a study Bible, so at the bottom of the page there were all these uh, study notes that people had added. And and she thought those were part of the original Bible. They aren't. Those are just study notes. Um, Good stuff again, but not Scripture itself. Well, anyways. Bible basic number two is that that the, the library has two main departments, two main sections. And if you are a, a, a Protestant, you wind up with 66 books. If you're, you're Catholic or Orthodox, you get 73. But they all have the same 27 New Testament books about Jesus. Bible basic number two, two parts, two different languages. Old part about God's work before Jesus, new part about God's work starting with the birth of Jesus. All right. So who wrote the books? Well, the long answer is that many people over hundreds and hundreds of years. This isn't a a book that just appeared like this as a whole library. The various books were written throughout time. They were collected together, and they have become what we know of as the Bible. So there are authors like Moses and the books of Moses. There's uh, the prophets uh, and the various books that they wrote. There are psalms written by David, but there are also psalms written by other music writers. There's the the four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. uh, There's so many people that wrote the Bible. That's the long answer. But the short answer is that these books come from God. As As we heard in 2 Timothy, all Scripture is God breathed. You could also uh, translate it as, all scripture is inspired by God. Inspired, inbreathed. And this is not dictated by God. Muslims believe that the Quran was dictated to Muhammad by the angel Gabriel in Arabic, and so therefore should only be read in Arabic. Mormons believe that the Book of Mormon was given to Joseph Smith on gold plates by the angel Moroni. But Christians believe that God uses people to accomplish God's work. So the uniqueness of each writer comes through in what they've written. 
in the books in our library here. Sure, there's a few places where God actually dictates, like the Ten Commandments. Exodus 34 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write down these words, and he wrote on the tablets the word of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. But for the most part, God inspires the writers to use their own words to express God's messages. For example, we have four different accounts of Jesus' life. Now, now, some critics say that's a problem. Why aren't they all identical? How come we can read one gospel and it says this, or we can read another gospel and it says that? But Christians see that as a gift because each gospel gives us a unique perspective on Jesus. They highlight different parts of his life and teaching. They allow us to see Jesus through the eyes of, of many different people and all the better to know him and to make us wise for salvation through faith in him. So that's Bible basic number three. God used many people to write the Bible, but it's all God-breathed. And in that way, when we read it, we can always declare the word of the Lord or the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, but why, why did God inspire this? Why did God inspire the, the Bible, this library? Well, we heard Timothy say that, it, that it's useful for teaching and, and for rebuking and correction and training in righteousness for equipping us for good works. It's written so that we can learn from God and learn about God. That's, that's what we hear from 2 Timothy. In addition, Romans 15.4 adds this, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. The Bible was written for hope and encouragement and endurance to help us through the difficulties that we face in life. That's another reason it was written. But I think the most powerful reason of all is, is the reason that John gives at the end of his gospel as he's finishing up telling the story of Jesus' life, he says this, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in these books. <clears throat> but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. We have this book so that we can come to faith in Jesus, and have life in his name. So that's Bible basic number four. Why did God inspire the Bible? So that we could know the Lord and have abundant life, eternal life. Now the Bible won't answer every question you have about any topic. The Bible is not Wikipedia. You can't go here for every answer about everything. But all you need to know about Jesus and to be saved is in this library. And that's why it was written. It provides a doorway through which we can meet Jesus and a guide to walk with him so that we all can know life in Jesus' name. Well, there's a whole lot more uh, that we could say about the Bible today, but I think I'm going to draw it to a close for now. Uh, there are Bible resources that are available here at the church. Um, there are many different ways that, to, that you can get into the Bible and learn. Um, there's the YouVersion app that you can put on your phone to help you. Of course, there's Bible study groups. and uh, There's the GPS, our Grow, Pray, Study resource that's uh, in your bulletins or online. Uh, you can turn to those things. There are so many different ways to learn. And whether you are brand new uh, or whether you have been studying the Bible forever and ever, there's always something more that God shares with us. It's like a treasure that just keeps growing in value. The more we read it, the more we realize how precious it is. Well, students are heading back to school now, and I know that school libraries function a lot different today than, than they did back when I was in school. But one lesson that I, that I learned as a student was 
that the more time I spent in the library, the easier time I had in class. And I don't think that's changed, at least when it comes to God's library, the Bible. If we don't spend time in the Bible, then, then we may miss out on its teaching and training, its encouragement and hope, and maybe even on, on a chance to know Jesus and have life in his name. But the more time we spend in this library, at least that's what I've found, the more time I spend in this library, the better life becomes. Remember, Jesus says, it is written, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this library, this collection of books, written over so many years by so many different people, but all breathed in by you so that we might have life. Lord, give us a thirst for knowledge. Just as Pastor Julie prayed for, for our students in our, in our schools to learn and have a desire to learn, give us a desire to learn of you, to see what you have to share with us through your Holy Scripture. Inspire us. Inspire us by your word. And thank you for its gift. Amen.